Hello and uh, good evening everyone. Thanks very much indeed for joining us tonight um, for this online open day for the online drawing development year. Um, really nice to have so many of you with us this evening. Um, really pleased that you've been able to join us. Um, my name's Fraser Scarf. I'm the head of drawing year at the Royal Drawing School. Um, I manage the drawing year programme and oversee the online drawing development year as well. Um, he was formerly a student at the school. Um, and we're joined this evening by Amy Austin, who was a student on the online drawing development years pilot year, um, nearly a year ago now. So, hi Amy, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Um, so this evening, um, what we'd like to do is outline um, what the online drawing development year is, how it works, how it functions as a course, and hopefully um, encourage lots of you to think about applying. Um, we've designed the evening to um, hopefully answer as many questions as you might have, and we're gonna do that through um, a short presentation, and then there'll be some time at the end for um, any questions that you might have. As we're on Zoom, you'll notice that your um, audio and video are turned off, but if you do want to ask us a question, you can um, type it in the chat box or the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen and then at the end I'll have a look at those and we can read them out and, and get back to you. Um, but for the first part of the evening I'm just going to take you through the structure of the course, how it works, how it's designed, a little bit about the curriculum um, and the fees and funding and then Amy's going to talk a little bit more about what her experience of being a student on the course was like. Um, how she found it, what she was doing before the course, um, and what she's been doing since. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that will answer any questions that you that you might have um, about the course. And I should say as well that all of the information that we're going to give you this evening is also available on our website. So if you head over to the Royal Drawing School website, you can look at our online program there. You can see the types of courses that we offer. Um, and you can find out more information about the online drawing development here. So without further ado, I'm just going to um, share my screen for you all so that you can see my slideshow. And um, that will that will hopefully um, take you through most of the questions um, that you might be wondering about the online drawing development year and um, allow me to just flesh out in a little bit more detail what the course is and what it's about. Okay, there we go. Um, so hopefully you can all see that now. So um, as some of you will probably have um, understood, this is, a, this is a relatively new course in our programme. Um, to date, we've run a, a pilot year for the online development year. And we're now currently in our first full year of the programme and we have a cohort studying with us at the moment who are due to graduate this December. So it's a relatively new course in the grand scheme of things, but it's been one that we've been thinking about for quite a number of years now. And understandably the pandemic and the kind of switch to online learning um, in a lot of institutions has brought about um, the development of the programme probably a lot quicker than we would have done otherwise. And the success of the programme has really borne out of the success of our switch to online teaching, which took place during the pandemic. And um, we'll set the scene for that in a, in a few moments when I talk more about the school. But in a nutshell, the Online Drawing Development Year programme is an online um, correspondence course which takes place for a full year and is designed to allow arts graduates, um, people with a developing studio practice to come to us to benefit from live taught tuition online throughout the week, um, as well as having a sort of ongoing critical discourse with tutors, mentors and peers um, all over the course of three individual terms. Um, so it's a year-long programme, it is, it is quite a commitment, it's a very structured course and it combines critical dialogue with practical live tuition in an online format. Um, so what we hope is that this is a programme that will appeal to a wide range of people, 
and give access to a wide range of people as well. Um, being online, the convenience of online, the ability to learn from home and to fit learning in and around other commitments in your life, be they family or work or whatever. Um, and I think importantly, the, the course is there to allow people to develop their own practice in a way that they might not have had the opportunity to do to date. That's really why we exist and what we want to help you to do. So some of the benefits of online learning, I mean, they, they're, they're obvious, really. I mean, um, the, the, the flexibility, um, you know, I think we've, we've seen through the tradition to um, transition to working from home and um, the various benefits that the online have brought um, to people's lives, that, that there is a sort of balance to be struck between the physical and the online. And, and we hope that by offering an online course such as this, we're allowing a new audience of people to engage with us as an institution, but mostly to benefit from the fantastic tuition that we offer and, and to have access to some of the fantastic faculty that teach on our programmes. Um, it means that you can work from home in your own house or studio or wherever it is that you choose to work, which cuts down on living costs, um, coming to London, for example, to study, or transport costs if you regularly um, rely on transport to study. Um, it also means that if you have access needs of any sort, then, then hopefully this course is better suited to you. It means that if you currently work, um, you can fit the course around that work all being well and, and find a, a working balance for you in terms of both your career as it is now and also developing your artistic practice. Um, and of course, if you've got family or um, you're a carer or you have to be in a certain place for whatever reason, then we hope that there's enough flexibility in a course like this to allow you to to do that as well as developing your studio practice. Um, and that means that we have people not only in London studying on this course, but also further afield around the whole of the UK, but also interestingly abroad and internationally, which has been a fantastic um, benefit to us of online learning. We expanded our community in a very meaningful way um, and really broadened our cohort and the people engaging with our classes every week. So just to give you a, a bit of context about the, the Royal Drawing School itself, um, the school was founded in the year 2000 by our founding artistic director, Kathleen Goodman, um, along with the support of His Majesty King Charles III. And um, the school was really set up at a time where drawing from observation was starting to disappear from the curriculums of many art schools. The life rooms were being closed. Um, students weren't getting that sort of direct access to observational drawing anymore. And so the school was formed and started out as a very small band of artists working together in Shoreditch. Um, and that eventually led on to the formation of our postgraduate drawing year program, which is still running strong now. And many of you will be familiar with that program, no doubt. Um, and then, then we brought in to offer teaching to um, members of the public through our public program courses, to young people through our young artists clubs and young associates, and now to school leaders as well on our Drawing the Gap program. So from very humble beginnings, we've expanded enormously to um, the point where we're now teaching thousands of people every year how to draw um, and how to draw from observation. Um, Skills-based teaching has always been at the heart of what we do. We really believe in that. We really believe in um, a, a lot of one-on-one -on -one tuition time with tutors. Um, we exist as a school to support artists, whatever stage they may be in their careers, um, and also to offer affordable arts education. So many of our um, courses run on a scholarship basis and as a charity, our aim is to keep our drawing tuition as affordable um, and as barrier free to as many people as possible. And finally, and I guess importantly, to allow drawing to evolve within the contemporary art world. And drawing, um, thankfully, is in a much stronger position than it was 22 years ago. And 
you only have to look at any major contemporary exhibition to see how important drawing is to contemporary practitioners. Um, and we're very much at the heart of that dialogue. Our fantastic alumni are out in the world making incredible work, um, which is all strengthened by their engagement and their um, tuition in drawing that's coming through the Royal Drawing School. So we really believe in allowing that conversation about contemporary drawing to evolve and flourish in the art world today. And a good quote here from, from Grayson, until we can insert a USB into our ear and download our thoughts, drawing remains the best way of getting visual information onto the page. And I think it's, it's true that so many of our tutors are so passionate about drawing um, and want to understand the role of drawing in, in the world that we live in. Um, and that's fine art, of course, but it's much wider than that. And our community um, includes people from all walks of life, many of whom use drawing for lots of different reasons. Um, and we really want to celebrate what drawing is and what it can be um, for a wide range of people. So let's have a look at the course in detail then. So as I said, it's a one year program. Um, it starts in January, 2023 and runs through until December, 2023. Um, and that's a year comprised of three 10 week terms. So it's three 10 week terms. Um, in each term, you select up to three online drawing classes that take place every, every week. Um, so you have the opportunity there to um, decide upon your own curriculum, really. You select from a wide range of online public courses um, and you sort of select your own curriculum based on those courses and attend up to three daytime sessions per week or a combination of evening and daytimes. In addition to those courses, which are very much the sort of staple part of your week, we also run online evening classes, which are solely for our online drawing development year students. And these are what we call our core program, our core classes. Um, and they're taught by members of our faculty um, who stay with you throughout the duration of your course. So you'll have constant sort of contact time with one or two members of faculty who sort of oversee the course, look after you and get to know you as students incredibly well. And those evening courses are designed to push you, to give you a chance to expand what you're doing in the regular daytime courses um, and to link those back to your own practice. You also have, over the course of the year, six tutorials with members of our faculty and six mentoring sessions. And those mentoring sessions are with our core tutors, the two people that oversee the programme in detail. And those tutorials and mentoring sessions are the sort of critical dialogue, um, the critical engagement part of the course, the chance for you to discuss your practice with um, a member of our faculty to talk about your experience on the course and to sort of pinpoint what it is that you want to investigate and explore and learn on the course. You also have an end of term crit at the end of each of the three terms, which is a peer group crit led by a member of faculty to discuss one another's work. Um, and you also have access to our online series of lectures and in conversations, um, which take place on Wednesday evenings. In the final term, there's a full professional development series um, designed to give you support and encouragement in thinking about where you might go next. Um, so you'll hear from arts lawyers, um, you'll hear from people who work with copyright and image rights, you'll hear from people who organise and curate exhibitions, um, uh, you'll hear from people who work in the public forum with public commissions. Um, so a very comprehensive series of professional development sessions which are really geared towards you leaving the course in a place where you're really ready to launch your practice. Um, and additionally, we also have a couple of days of in-person teaching in London at the end of the course for anyone who can make it in to take part. So just expanding on the core program then. So there's a very intensive component of the course and um, your core tutors on the course will be looking to push you as students to 
um, look at themes and ideas emerging from the group. Um, and in these evening sessions, they will uh, come up with different exercises and workshops for you to take part in that are designed to sort of slightly push you out of the familiar and um, allow you to develop as a cohort. Tutorials um, last about 45 to 50 minutes. They take place online. You share images that you've been working on with your tutors and in turn, they give you critical dialogue and feedback. Um, and there's also opportunity to have that same experience with other members of your cohort as well. So peer-to-peer -peer crits and reviews to discuss ideas and one another's work. And the cohorts on each group are quite small. Um, we're looking for between 30 and 40 students for the next cohort. So it's quite a small group. So you will get to know your cohort really well. Um, you'll get familiar with talking about one another's work um, through things like crits and forums. And as I said, in the third term, um, we have the professional development series, the in-house teaching for those who can make it. Um, and also we encourage the year group to think about um, co-organizing a um, physical exhibition, a way of marking the year, um, which feeds into the professional development that we provide. Um, so we encourage each year group to try and have an exhibition and um, Amy's year group had a fantastic show um, in Bermondsey and I'm sure she'll mention that when she speaks in a moment. Just a list here of some of the fantastic people that have visited the school and, and held lectures and in conversations online over the past few years. So I won't read through this list, but you can see there, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good who's who of um, um, sort of prominent practitioners in the contemporary art world. And some really interesting minds and voices and speakers who have all come in to talk about their, their work with us. Um, so, Fantastic to be a, a part of that, that conversation series and to have the insight of all these incredible minds and voices. And just to explain what an online class is like, so um, our sessions are taught over Zoom. No doubt you've all had some experience of Zoom um, over the past few years, It'd be pretty hard not to, I fear. Um, so Zoom is our sort of online platform for teaching. Um, so all of our classes are taught live. There's no pre-recorded content. There's always a tutor with you at all times um, in the daytime and evening courses. So that means that there's always someone there to talk to. Um, if you're having problems, um, you want to have a conversation with a tutor, they're there with you throughout the day teaching the course. Um, the courses are also supported by something called Padlet, which is an online notice board. Um, that's a platform that allows you to upload your drawings and work so that the tutor and the rest of the group can see them. Um, that's where at the end of the session, you probably go to have a crit and look at one another's pieces. Um, and it's also the platform that we use for things like tutorials um, um, and you know, many other components of the course. Daytime courses run from 10 until 5 p.m. Um, and evening courses run from 6 until 9 p.m. And we're also next term um, introducing a few sort of afternoon slots, which will run between two and five, um, just to give those of you who work in the morning, say, um, another opportunity to, to study. So our, our aim is that the course is as flexible as it can be um, and allows you to pick and choose courses that will work around whatever it is you've got going on in your lives at the time. And then looking at the curriculum broadly. So during the pandemic, when we made the move to online teaching, we looked at our in-house taught curriculum and sort of cherry picked the things that we thought would work really well in an online format and carried them over. And I think it's worth saying too that our online courses are taught by the same faculty who teach our in-house courses. So all that sort of wealth of experience and knowledge and all that teaching experience from the school over the past 20 years is all packed into these courses. Um, and broadly speaking, we lump our curriculum into the following categories. So drawing in the studio, drawing from art, drawing our environment, drawing in imagination and printmaking. 
So let's just have a look at some of those now. So drawing in the studio, that's, that broadly means your home studio, whatever that is. Um, so these are courses that are designed to um, get you thinking about working on your own practice and in your own studios. Um, and these are courses that also replicate some of the courses that we do in person here at the school. Now, occasionally um, our Zoom courses will use models. So for drawing your head, for example, you may be taking part in an online course with a model. Um, and obviously there are certain elements of working with a model online that differ from being in person. Um, and I think what we've learned and done over the past two years is adapt to the way that we use models online to make sure that they really suit what it is that we're trying to deliver. I mean, it's great, for example, in an online course that you can move the camera angle. Um, you can have the camera looking down on a model or up at a model in really interesting ways that you can't necessarily do in the studio. So whilst we don't replicate the sort of on the life room dynamic as it is in person online, we do think of creative ways of using models to complement the online drawing sessions as best we can. And just some example images here from similar courses, but um, then moving on to drawing from art. So um, drawing from art is a, is a fantastic way to learn. It's a fantastic way to explore um, the history of art as well as other cultures. So many of our courses online are designed to do this. Um, many, many institutions and galleries have fantastic online resources. Um, the National Gallery, for example, you can look at every image. You can zoom in in incredible detail. So it might sound a strange concept to work from a, a National Gallery painting online, but in reality, it works incredibly well. And our tutors have a tremendous amount of knowledge and insight into many of these collections and will share that with you. Um, classes like drawing from film, where you may be drawing stills from moving imagery or exploring video work or animation, um, world imagery and mythology, looking at um, the history of art through different lenses and through the eyes of different cultures. Um, And then drawing our environments. So um, as well as drawing sort of in our own studio spaces, we, we encourage students to leave the house, to get out, to you know, make work in their gardens and their local surroundings and the streets around them or the parks around them and to bring work back to the classroom to share on Zoom. So whilst obviously there is quite a lot of engagement with the screen in the early parts of the courses, we don't want people to be locked to their computers all day. So our tutors factor in regular breaks and many of our tutors will have certain sections of courses that take place away from the screen and away from the computer to allow you to work independently, to work privately or to go outside and work if you want to. And these courses are some examples of courses that have been designed to, to do that. And then drawing and the imagination. I mean, the imagination really is not its own subject. It, it feeds into all of the courses that we do at the school. You can't separate drawing and the imagination. They're, they're, they're linked, but we do have certain courses that sort of push this a bit further. So um, transforming observation, memory and imagination, where you maybe don't know each week what you're going to be drawing or the tutor will throw in surprises or challenging elements to the course that are designed to make you really sort of think about what it is that you're seeing and how you see. Um, there's um, drawing into animation where you, you work with a tutor to make online animations or immersive narratives and drawing a story where you start the class with a piece of text or a poem um, or an excerpt from a play and you discuss that as a group and then you make visual imagery arising from that story. So the imagination feeds into everything that we do at the school. And it's very, very important. And working independently and as independent practitioners, it will be very important to you as well. And then printmaking, you might be thinking, well, how do we do printmaking online? But um, I mean, one of the challenges of the pandemic was, was giving work to our printmaking tutors and saying, can you 
come up with something for people to do at home. And they did not only that, but they made incredibly um, important and valuable courses about printmaking from home using everyday tools. So in these courses, you might experiment with making your own inks from coffee or tea or oak galls. Um, you might make monotypes at home using um, the back of a spoon. You might make sort of rudimentary woodcuts and lino prints. So there's a fantastic world of sort of homemade printmaking out there to explore. And the printmaking courses have been some of our most successful and most popular courses for online attendees. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking now and hand over to Amy. And Amy's going to talk a little bit about her experience on the online drawing development wheel. So I'll stop sharing my screen, Amy, and then I'll hand over to you. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Amy. I was on the online draw drawing development year in 2021. Um, and the reason I ended up doing the online drawing year was because I studied at, um, at Brighton University and I did illustration and it was the it was a great course but I found that it was really lacking the um, traditional elements of art school that I'd really hoped for so as Fraser was talking about earlier those the things like the life drawing I found that they had disappeared and I was having to search them outside of university, which um, was expensive and difficult to fit in. Um, so I, I came out of my undergrad degree a bit confused about my work. I wasn't sure where I was going. All I knew is that I didn't want to do illustration. Um, and the, the drawing year that they provide, the in-person one was, you know would have been what I would have loved to do but I live down near Brighton um, and I have some chronic health conditions that mean that actually going to London three times a week would have been really difficult um, and not something that I'm really able to do. Um, so having the opportunity to do the online course um, as well as sort of it being during the pandemic and everyone has kind of moved online, um, really gave me the opportunity to still progress with my work and, and develop the, the areas that I felt like I had really missed at university. Um, so this was some of the work that I did in my final year at university. Um, and I, as I said, I came away from, from my degree feeling quite confused. Um, so this piece was um, one of the pieces that actually came out of our core, one of our core sessions. Um, and I found those sessions where you're with your group, um, your year group, really useful because the, the courses that you do during the day um, they're quite fast paced and you make lots of work and sometimes you don't always know what to do with it if something hasn't worked if you didn't finish work it can be um, you end up with just lots of material that you don't always know what to do with um, and the core sessions really help you to kind of utilize the work that you've got and transform it into something new and I found those sessions not only to get to know the tutors that will follow you through the year but also your peer group um, really helpful in pushing forward the things that I was learning in the courses that I was doing and and just pushing things just a bit further and with the support of tutors who who get to know you really well throughout the year um, and so this for me was a real turning point in my work um, and I found that these these sessions where we were kind of looking at different ways of approaching work and how to get started 
really helped me get over the fear of that kind of the blank page that all artists hate. Um, having being able to come to a piece of paper, a canvas, whatever it might be, and and not feel that I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I want to do. Um, these sessions really gave me the opportunity to sort of strip that fear away and just come with the things that I've already made during lessons and really build on on new ideas. Um, so I was able, so this piece was one where I, again, I've taken work from lots of different courses that I've done and, and put them together into, into collage work. Um, and I found that even though you might pick courses that are quite different from each other, whether that be something like drawing from the National Gallery um, or a, one of the um, drawing from the studio classes, um, you find that actually your work starts to link back together. And I found this really useful in, in creating new work from old work um, because I could start to bring all these separate sort of areas back into one place and, and start to kind of consolidate all my ideas. Um, I found it really useful to be working in my own space. Um, as I said, having health conditions that mean that I don't, um, or it's harder for me to have access to a studio, let alone the cost of renting the studio. Um, I was working from my living room and it, it's not a big space. Um, and I found that actually, it becomes your studio, it turns into your studio. And I also really enjoyed the fact that there wasn't anyone else directly with me. Um, you kind of lose that fear of comparison that sometimes you get in classes with other people. And you can be really free to make the work that you kind of are brave enough to, to start making. and but you still get the feedback from your tutors and your peer group um, at the end or during the lessons. So you don't miss out on that feedback from people, but you're just, you're given that freedom at the beginning to really make work that's, that is kind of more true to you and you're not worried about what other people are doing and what they're thinking about what you're doing. Um, I found that really valuable. Um, it, also meant that for me I was able to have two operations while I was on the course and recover um, while still being able to attend the classes and do what I could um, but, but have that balance between the things that I needed to do and also helping myself progress with my, my studio work. Um, so this piece was one of the pieces that um, I exhibited with our peer group. Um, as Fraser was saying, we put on an exhibition in Bermondsey and um, it was something that we were all really keen to do, not only because we wanted to celebrate the kind of finishing the course, but also because although it is really useful having an online course we did also really want to meet each other um, and we were able to organize getting um, a couple of people who were abroad one person in Poland one person in France were able to come over and and put the exhibition on together with us and that was a really amazing opportunity and just a really fun event that we were able to to put together with the help of the, the drawing school and, and um, the gallery that we, we worked with. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be down to you to, to make that effort, but it, it really is worthwhile. And um, it's led to, you know, us as a peer group really bonding. Um, we still have gallery visits together. We, connect with each other on Zoom every week. 
um, when we can. Some people won't be there every week, but we, we set up the opportunity for us all to talk still. And um, it's meant that we, we kept our kind of relationship going um, since finishing in April. And, and that's been such a joy that I didn't expect to get from the course, having a, a new network of, of other artists who do completely different work, um, but still have the same um, kind of the same drive to, to keep improving. Um, and, um, and doing the, um, the online course, I, when I came out of it, I, I hadn't planned to start doing an MA, but um, I, it really gave me a huge portfolio of work that I was able then to use to apply to do a fine art MA, um, learning from my previous mistake of doing an illustration BA, I, I've now started doing my fine art MA. And I think that wasn't my intention going into this, into the online drawing year, but um, all the work that I had created has meant that I've had an opportunity now to move forward even further with my education and, and kind of keep progressing. Um, and I think that in itself has been you know, something I wasn't expecting and, and it's just been a really kind of positive outcome of, of the year. And um, I was just going to say that um, a lot of people ask what, what courses I really enjoyed when I was uh, doing the online drawing year. And um, there were a few that I, and everyone is really different. So I would recommend having a go at all the different types because I didn't expect to enjoy some of the ones that I actually ended up doing. So as Fraser was saying about drawing at the National Gallery, I was a bit skeptical heading in, um, but actually that was one of the most beneficial courses I found for really looking at other people's work um, and, and kind of coming away with new respect for artists um, and understanding how to compose images and all, all that kind of the technique and history um, with tutors who just know so much about, um, about artists and artwork. It's, it's a really great course. Um, and also the drawing from observation, all of the imagination courses, I did a few multiple times. And I found that those were, for me, really helpful to bring together different parts of my work. Um, but as I said, there were courses I wasn't able to do that I really wanted to just because of timings and days. But I would really recommend just trying to get the really broad idea of all the different types in your first, first term and even the second term. And then you've got that final turn to maybe go back to some of the other courses um and redo them it's really useful because the tutors change and so actually you you may be doing the same course but the content is very different and I think that was a really useful um useful thing for me to do um so the work that I'm doing now as I said I'm doing my MA but it's all, I've also gained confidence to apply for open calls. Um, I've had my work exhibited um, at Bankside Gallery in London um, and a couple of other, other galleries in London as well. Um, I've gained a confidence that I don't think I would have had before doing the online drawing year um, and having the support of um, the tutors to go to put in applications and things like that during the year was really useful to know asking for advice about what to put in an application for open calls. Um, all of those things that um, I guess you don't always think about 
if you're leaving university or you don't aren't really told about I found that it was a really useful um part of the the online drawing year that you have a well of information from the tutors who are are so willing to share with you um and it's been a real kind of step forward for me in in getting my work out there um and gaining more confidence through through making um applications for residencies and and things like that um and I guess finally I would just say that if there's anything that's putting you off applying um whether that's the kind of in not having the in-person element I would just kind of reiterate the fact that it the the laptop sort of becomes your studio in a way um in the sense that you you have people on the other end who are so willing to talk about work with you about giving you ideas giving you constructive criticism um and the people that you do the course with like i said we've we still keep in touch. Um, a, a few of them came to my wedding in the summer. I've made friends for life that I obviously would never have made previously. And um, I think that that's a, a huge part of the course that is separate to making art, but is still just as important to it. Um, and I know Fraser will come on to the costs after, but I would also just say that it is an investment but I think it's an investment in yourself and um I have not regretted doing the course once and so yeah I would just say that having the opportunity to take part in something like this with the Royal Drawing School has has been a huge yeah a huge um kind of positive for, for my work and and the the people I've met along the way so I will hand you back to Fraser that's great thank you Amy thanks so much for sharing um with us your experience on the year so yeah I'm just going to um finish up just by sharing a few last slides with you and then we'll move on to some questions. Um, so just to reiterate that all of our, excuse me, all of our faculty are practicing artists themselves. Um, that's always been the model we've used since the school was founded. And what that means is that our tutors don't have to do any of the administration for the program. There's no box ticking, form writing, or anything like that behind the scenes. They turn up, they teach, and then they go back to their studio or wherever. Um, and it's a pretty extensive list that we work with. And this is just a, a taster of some of those names. But all in all, we have a fantastic and ever-growing base of incredible practitioners teaching on our courses. Um, so some of those names may be familiar to you, some of them may be not, but all of our tutors are very, very dedicated and passionate about what they do. Um, when you graduate from the um, course, um, we open up um, a residency programme at Dumfries House in Scotland, um, which you can apply for, fantastic residencies and very beautiful studios um, up in Scotland, um, which we open to our alumni networks. Um, and you also receive an ongoing 50% discount on the programme courses online as well when you finish. Um, so a, a few sort of little opportunities there for graduating students. So on to the fees. Um, so the fees for 2023 are £3,850 per year. Um, there's an initial payment of £1,500 when we offer you a place to sort of secure that place. And then the rest of the money can be paid into instalments um, later on to help spread that cost over the year. I mean, you know, fully appreciate how difficult a time it is for everyone at the moment and probably will be for, for some time yet. So um, we appreciate this is not a 
insignificant amount of money, but hopefully, as Amy said, it's an investment in in you and your future, and um, in sort of comparison to what a full year's um, course um, in person might be, or some of the other online courses. In fact, we think it does represent good value for money, um, both in terms of the dialogue you get with tutors, but also the fact you're taking three days of online live courses every week. Uh, we do have a few um, concessionary places available, and um, yeah, if you feel you qualify for one of those, you can um, apply at the point of being offered the place. So who can apply? Well, anyone. Um, we don't so uh, we don't require you to have done a, a, a BA before. Um, many people will have done um, a BA in a creative subject, but it's absolutely not a prerequisite. Um, all you need to be able to do is show us that you've got a strong commitment to drawing, um, to study at a sort of postgraduate level, um, as well as a short statement about your work. Um, acceptance onto the course is based on your portfolio, um, which is reviewed by a panel of um, external faculty and tutors. Um, and then most importantly, how to apply. Um, so applications are open. Um, at the moment, you apply online via our website and your online application um, will ask you to submit a 500 word statement telling us about your current practice and why you want to do the course. Um, and then we'll ask you to upload 20 digital images. So they should include 10 drawings done in dry media, ink or watercolor, basically anything with paper as its support. Um, as well as 10 additional works. Um, these additional works are really to give us a flavour of what your wider practice is. Um, so these could be works um, in video or animation or sculpture or installation or whatever it is that you do um, that, that forms your practice. So 20 images in total divided as we've shown you there. The deadline for applications is Monday the 21st of November. Um, and again, you apply online through the Royal Drawing School website. Um, when those applications have gone in, they are reviewed by a panel. Um, there's no formal interview or sketchbook element to the process. So once you've applied, um, you will hear back from us within a couple of weeks, letting you know whether or not you've, um, we can offer you a place. Um, and from there, we would very quickly take your course choices for the first term and send you documents and other things to, to fill out before joining us in January. So spend a year drawing and see how it changes your practice. That is um, hopefully enough information to answer most of the questions that, that you might have had. But um, we do have, uh, what, 10 minutes now. Um, in which we can answer any further questions. So if there's anything we've missed or anything that you're still wondering about, do feel free to, to ask now. Uh, you can type your questions into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen or into the chat box and um, we'll try and answer those for you. Um, if not, most of the information that we've covered this evening is on our website, so you can actually go there and, and look at most of the things we've discussed. So let's have a look at the questions now. Um, so the first question, um, what are the online course options for the daytime courses? Um, what are the list of drawing courses? Um, so, so the curriculum I broadly covered there in the, um, in the presentation. Um, so you can see how the curriculum is divided. If you want to look at the actual courses themselves that we run, um, the best place to go is our website. Um, go to our online learning section. And from there, you can look at the online courses that are available. There's a wide range to choose from, more than you'd be able to sign up to over the course of the whole year. But um, lots of interesting courses divided across the week. So it's mostly a case of you deciding what courses sound interesting and appeal to you, and also then factoring in your own availability and time schedule in terms of what you feel you can sign up to and take on, and then forming a, forming a curriculum based on based on that. Um, question there for you, Amy. I don't know if you can see the questions from, from Caroline. Yeah. Um, so Caroline's question is, did you need 
slash were you able to change course days due to ill health slash other commitments? Um, how much time outside tuition time were you able to spend on your own work? So um, in terms of changing the course days, um, I was lucky in the sense that I, the days that I picked, if I wasn't well on a specific day, um, I would try to attend for the morning to get an idea of what was going to happen during the day um, so I could get an overview. Um, but it's also really helpful that we have the Padlet um, option. So the tutors will usually upload kind of a itinerary for the day um, and any supporting images or texts. Um, so even if you're not able to attend on a specific day, um, you're sort of able to then look at that work outside of, of the class time. Um, and I found that really helpful for days that I just wasn't well enough to, to kind of be present. Um, and how much time you, it's an intense course. So I would say there wasn't a huge amount of time outside of doing the three days plus working two days and also you know, doing laundry um, to, to focus on work other than what was in the course and the courses. Um, but I actually, what happened was that I had all these ideas from doing the courses and, and making all this work that meant that when I came to the end of the year, I was actually really excited to start working on my own things because I had had all this inspiration for a whole year and, and suddenly then kind of had the opportunity to really start, start working on it. And there is the time in between the terms as well. So there's the, the summer break, or well, it depends when the year starts, but you've got the, the breaks in between your, your 10 week terms to really kind of put into practice the things you've learned during those courses. So although while the, the classes are on, I found it more difficult to really do my own work. Um, I, there was kind of enough time between the terms and then sort of it gave me a real push once the course had finished to really keep working on, on my own things. Mm, thanks Amy. Um, a few questions about the curriculum and the course and the, the number of classes. So um, one from Poppy, how many classes do you take a week? Um, so it's up, up to three classes per week. Um, and those classes are, are daytime courses, which run from 10 till 5. Um, but you can sort of split your timetable and, um, you know, for example, do one daytime, two daytime classes and two evenings or um, some combination to, to make up your requirements. So it doesn't have to be solely daytime classes because actually, you know, for many people, we found that you know to do three full days is is quite a commitment. So, but I think on average, if you look at the timetabling, most people will be doing maybe two full daytime courses and then an additional one or two evening classes to make up their you know entire curriculum. Um, you know, and as Amy said, it's it's just a case really of making it balance for you and, and make it sort of apply and fit around your life and your lifestyle. Um, you know, and there's some room within the first few weeks to change things about if you need to. Um, we understand that things come up and, and change. So um, we want to be as flexible as possible. Um, you know, and, and you know, each term you can pick different courses and try different things as well. Um, so it, it is all about balance, obviously. We do, we do have some Saturday courses. Um, the majority of courses take place in the week and in the weekday evenings, but we do have two Saturday courses as well, which you can also sign up to as well. Um, and Hilary, to answer your question, how many hours a week? Um, well, I guess if you're you know, doing the equivalent of three daytime courses, which are about eight hours, you know, plus a, a couple of evenings, you're probably looking at about sort of between 26 and 28 hours contact time per week if you factor in 
you know, taking the courses and also any tutorials that you might have or any of the evening um, core sessions. Um, how many people do we accept? So with, with this coming cohort will be between um, 30 and 40 students. Um, we're not sure at the moment because we're in our infancy really in a, as, as, as a course, um, we don't really know at the moment what the total number of applicants will look like. Um, been going up in the two years we've run the course and we expect it to again, um, but we can't say for sure sort of how many applications we'll receive at present, but we're looking to build a cohort of between 30 and 40. Um, the core evening classes, um, Christopher, your question there. So you have um, you have three core evenings per term. So that's one core session with each of the um, which with each of your main tutors. So one might happen in week three, one might happen in week seven, and then at the end of term you have the the group and the term crit. So there are three sort of additional um, evening sessions each term. Um, One where he's submitting a sculpture as one of your portfolio pieces. Um, yes, a collage of photos is fine if it helps to sort of show the form or, or show us what we're looking at. Um, and if you're submitting a film, I think um, I think rather than the limit to the length, I think there's a limit to the file size. So as long as it's within the I think it's four or five meg file size that we specify, it doesn't matter how long the how long the film is. Um, Although, you know, I guess bear in mind that the application panel, you know, are moving through a lot of applications. So if it's 10 minutes long, it might be a bit, a bit much. But um, yeah, I don't think there's a limit to actual, actual length. Um, Paul's question about moving courses. So um, we, have a, we have a small window at the start of each term for you to try and switch on to another course. If you sign up to something and you're, um, you don't feel it's right for you or you, you prefer to do something else, we do have a sort of window of opportunity for you to, to move um, course if it's possible. Um, but after that point, we, um, we try and discourage anyone from um, moving between courses, mostly because of the sort of disruption it causes. And um, you know, most of our courses are designed to operate as a block. So they'll have a very defined sort of start and end point and the tutors will be taking you through that course over the, over the term. So um, you know, by joining the course halfway through, you've probably missed you know, quite a lot of fundamental information or the, the sort of flow of that course as it were. So we try and keep people um, we try and keep people on to the same courses they've booked on to. Um, um, okay, I'm hoping that's nearly answered to all of the questions we've got, and that brings us to the end of the um, end of the hour rather meeting. Um, but as I said, everything's online. Um, if you do have further questions, um, then please do feel free to have a look online or to get in touch with the. Um, online drawing development year team um, whose information you'll find online as well. You can drop us an email, we'll get back to you. Um, and yeah, hopefully we, um, we've we taught you a bit about the course tonight and, and, and more hopefully we hope that you'll go away and think about applying. It is a fantastic course. Um, I think it's, a, it's an interesting and a unique course in that it's not only online, but it's also taught live. Um, and I think that makes us um, sort of special in, in the sort of grand scheme of what's being taught online at the moment. The fact that you have this sustained live contact time with pupils and peers, I think is very important and, and special to what we do. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for, um, for listening in. We, um, we really do hope you will consider applying and we hope to see many of you um, online or in person with us at the school again. And um, thank you very much, Amy, for joining us tonight as well and sharing your experience on the course um, and yeah thank you all very much indeed um, enjoy the rest of your evenings and um, do get in touch if you have any further questions or anything you want to know about the program thank you